Matt Jordan, uh, who will be talking about Canopy IIIF, a static site generator that builds a discovery-focused digital exhibit or digital scholarship website from a IIIF collection and its manifests. And Matt uh, is based at Northwestern University Libraries. And thank you for sharing, Matt. That looks great. So I turn it over to you. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm Matt Jordan, developer at Northwestern University Libraries. Uh, and part of the story uh, has probably been too, I was previously at uh, University of Tennessee um, with Mark uh, Baggett, who's also here. Um, so uh, Canopy is a sort of a, uh, it's a project that's been in development a few years now. Um, and it tries to consider whether or not a uh, IIIF collection can be used as the sort of the primary data source uh, for generating a, a static site uh, for a IIIF collection. Uh, and, uh, you know, a traditional viewer like Mirador Universal Viewer sort of lives within a website or an application. Uh, and the difference between uh, Canopy and something like that is that Canopy is essentially a collection viewer that becomes the website. Um, and it will build pages automatically for the manifests that are within the IIIF collection and get into some of the details about that. Uh, doesn't uh, necessarily dive through collections of collections of collections. It sort of has to be a sort of a flat collection at this point in time. Um, but uh, it'll generate pages for those manifests. Uh, it'll aggregate, aggregate metadata from those manifests uh, to sort of develop a, a search index. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and it'll give tools uh, that will allow you to sort of extend that website further, add some, add context about the, the collection items themselves. Um, quick overview, uh, maybe like why this came about, why is sort of important. Um, well, you know, we know that the, uh, the IIIF presentation API has sort of like well-defined relationships, a, you know, a manifest, can be part of a IIIF collection. A manifest can have a set of canvases. A manifest can have descriptive properties like uh, metadata. Um, and these things can become content on a screen. Um, and Canopy hones these sort of relationships between all these properties and all these different resources and essentially generates a website mirroring them. It, it uses a variety of tools within the IIIF community that have been developed. Um, throughout um, to deliver like these these interoperable resources. And uh, it does this without having to, you know, sort of one of the core concepts of IIIF is the ability to like reuse and remix content. So Canopy does this without having to, uh, you know, do too much derivative generation of both textual content, like that's within a manifest uh, or of resources that are served like images or video or whatnot. Those are still served by their host institutions or providing institutions. The Canopy site is just a new static site that sort of builds off of these resources that are hosted elsewhere on the internet. Um, so the original Canopy is just, I want to create this distinction here just so there's no confusion. Uh, back in uh, 2021, while at the University of Tennessee, uh, I was sort of charged with developing a web presence for an oral history project called Rising from the Ashes. At the time, we were also sort of developing in uh, triple life infrastructure, and we had these videos and audio files uh, that were part of manifests, uh, and these were being served out. Uh, uh, and and there's also a triple life collection associated with these. So rather than duplicating effort when we were generating this uh, oral history project, that was sort of a standalone website, uh, we we built a platform that would aggregate, aggregate this IIIF collection and, uh, and basically generate pages for each of the manifests. Uh, uh, and we then you know, extended that further. But, and uh, the problem with this particular project was that the code was a little bit too bespoke uh, and we couldn't reuse it for the next digital exhibit project that came along. Uh, and this you know, really sort of bothered me uh, so I began to refactor this idea and created what is now triple I, uh, Canopy Triple IF. So, uh, as I said, Canopy uh, Triple IF is powered by 
a single uh, IIIF collection manifest. Uh, and that that IIIF collection, uh, the ideal structure of this is it's a collection with a set of manifests under it. As I said earlier, it, will, it cannot yet support collections of collections. Uh, and during the build process, uh, each of these manifests are parse and it will create uh, this static site, which is built on a platform of, of Next.js. So this will allow libraries, museums, uh, archives, sort of a straightforward solution uh, for creating digital exhibits from their works or in their repositories. Uh, and it'll allow researchers to curate and aggregate content from various providers, adding their own context, perhaps supplying uh, also like a small scale headless infrastructure for smaller institutions, like maybe like a public library or a smaller museum, the ability to sort of build out their own digital collections uh, with uh, very little uh, uh, infrastructure needs. So how does this happen? Um, all the manifests in Triple Live Collection will receive uh, a page automatically. A search index is going to be generated from the label, the summary, and the metadata in those manifests. And, and then also uh, metadata labels can be automatically generated as facets. So for example, if we know that all of our manifests have a defined date, uh, then we can have Canopy generate facets for this automatically. Uh, and in this way, we can sort of extend uh, and uh, out that collection and that manifests even further. Uh, we can add scholarly context to our uh, Canopy site uh, using Markdown, uh, and we can sort of uh, reference the items that are in the IIIF collection uh, in narrative content, however we need to. Going further, uh, we there's this is more on the, the fringe of Canopy, but uh, we're, we're experimenting with the ability to be able to integrate maps using NavPlace, uh, and we're uh, trying to seek out uh, additional ways to support uh, internationalization through uh, various locales. Um, before I go a little bit further, I want to talk more about like the anatomy of a Triple F collection. Well, it will have an ID. This will be important in a, in a minute, uh, and then I'll have a bunch of manifests within it. Uh, and each of those uh, manifests will have minimal properties, but they will have a manifest referenced. Uh, and so uh, Canopy will, will go through each of those items and generate pages for them. Uh, this is a sample uh, Canopy configuration file. This is all you need to sort of generate your own distinct Canopy collection. You can see here that there's a collection, there's a featured property. Each of these featured uh, uh, URLs is a manifest that you would like to be featured. Uh, and then there's the metadata label that you would like to be uh, set as the facet. And then there's additional theming, which I can get into as well. Uh, just just a little bit in the, on, the on the technical side. This is how the build happens. It, it fetches the, or it retrieves the triple I collection. It'll automatically upgrade it from uh, version two to three. Uh, this uses uh, a tooling created by Stephen Fraser at Digerati. So uh, it's, it's pretty well, uh, pretty, pretty well designed stuff. Uh, and it'll automatically upgrade everything that was version two to version three. So that way we know that we're working with the, the same sort of data shape uh, and it'll do the same for a triple I of manifests. Uh, and it, again, it'll collect the label, the summary of the metadata, and also check to see if there's a thumbnail. And then it uses all this, pulls it together, generates the pages, and uh, creates that search index. There's a, a built-in search index uh, that runs entirely on the client side of things. Uh, this is using Flex Search, which is uh, pretty great tooling as well. Uh, this flex search configuration can also be customized to fit your 
uh, I guess, manifest or collections. For instance, let's just say you were working with Cyrillic. You could customize the character set uh, to, to make sure that it matches Cyrillic. Uh, and, uh, and that way, anything that's being indexed will be indexed properly. You can also uh, sort of extend this out further to, to properly uh, tokenize or uh, create stemming off of off of your characters so sort of sort of fit the fit the type of text that you're working with that you would like to be indexed. Uh, and in addition, this is sort of a cool thing about uh, Canopy is that it will create new triple IF collections as it's generating from the old one. So because let's just say you were to say uh, that you wanted to facet dates because you know that your triple life collection has a bunch of manifests that have a particular date. For instance, in this in this case, uh, the these 26 items have a date of 1909. Well, a new triple IF collection will be generated in your static site uh, that is publicly available that can be reserved out to the rest of the world uh, that would just be for the date 1909. Um, and I'll, I can demonstrate that in a second as well. Uh, uh, adding contextual content through Markdown is very easy. Uh, this uses sort of a flavor of Markdown called uh, MDX, which is Markdown with JSX. It's a little bit technical, um, but it allows you to integrate in uh, React components like let's just say a triple IF viewer into your markdown content. So as you're writing out sort of narrative content, uh, you can sort of uh, weave in uh, a viewer here or there to sort of uh, supplement uh, your, your uh, textual content that's written in markdown. Uh, and I will demonstrate that in a second as well. Uh, real quick on the roadmap, and then I'll just skip to the demo. Uh, so we're, a couple of things that uh, we were thinking about doing uh, moving forward as Canopy matures a little bit uh, is making it more viewer malleable. So right now, all the the viewer viewers that are integrated are are based in the the clip the Clover Triple IF framework. Uh, uh, but in order to get a viewer like Mirador in, we're sort of waiting for, uh, and perhaps it's ready. I haven't really been following, but uh, we need a Mirador 4 to be released before it can be fully integrated. Um, but maybe uh, we'll be developing guides to allow uh, users to integrate in other viewers. Uh, would love to be able to support collections of collections to a depth degree, um, meaning I, I think maybe if it's uh, a collection of a collection of a collection of a collection, you know, it can go on. Uh, add infinitum, so uh, maybe uh, maybe being able to have some safeguards there, uh, but allowing uh, a top level collection to be sort of parsed out uh, and a, a website generated from it would be ideal. Uh, and then also supporting uh, other uh, uh, other types of viewers, meaning like a a timeline um, uh, and that would that would integrate in navdate. Um, so that's it for the presentation side of things. But I did want to demo a build. Um, and Matt uh, showed me how in the, the Harvard Art Museum has this collection generation tool. If you uh, generate a, uh, if you are logged in as a user. Uh, and so, you know, I've always sort of been a fan of Winslow Homer. So I went in here and you know searched for Winslow Homer, and I added a bunch of his paintings to a triple I or to a collection in here. Uh, and so I have twenty nine paintings in here, and uh, and these are served out as a triple I collection. And let's just say I'm I'm a I'm I don't know I'm an avid fan of them, uh, and I want to create my own website dedicated to Homer. Uh, and so I could bring in these these 29 items. 
And I have a triple I of collection that's served out right here. Uh, and I'm going to come over here to uh, the Canopy code base. Uh, and I have this use template button right here. Um, and I'm going to create a new repository. And I'm going to create it under my own. I'm going to call it Homer. Just take a second. Um, and what this this is do, doing is duplicating the Canopy Triple I of code base over to my own uh, account here, uh, and then just a couple of small steps. I'm going to set this up so that it will deploy this static site to AI to GitHub Pages. Um, this is all documented in the in the uh, documentation here. Um, but I'm basically going to be following this uh, guide right here, the deploy to GitHub pages. Um, and just a couple of small steps that you have to do just to get it to work properly. Um, I'm going to change this to my username and change this to Homer. This will match my There. And, and then finally, after I, I'll have to go to this config directory, and I'm going to create a new file. And this is my canopy configuration. I'm going to call this canopy.json. And I had this pre baked. I'll walk you through my decision making here in a sec. But, um, when I add in this, let me make this larger so everyone can see. But this is the configuration file for my Homer canopy site that I'm creating. Um, I'm setting the triple IF collection right here. I'm setting two featured manifests. Um, I'm going to have my website automatically facet for date and classification. Now, the reason why I decided that is the of the tw in the those 29 uh, manifests there's some distinctive dates uh, and there's a little bit of a distinctive classification going on in there um uh, and meaning like i think like painting or drawing um and and then i have a theme setting right here i'm going to say i want my accent color to be red gray color to be sand uh, and radius small and then i'm going to commit that and Come back over here. And the last thing I need to do in order to get this running is set up GitHub pages. Um, and this is all documented. I'm going fast, but uh, I'm setting the, the branch to be GH pages here. I'm going to hit save. And, and now whenever I make a change into in this config, it's going to automatically build and generate my canopy site. And because it's statically generated, it's it has the ability for it to be hosted in GitHub pages. And it will take a second for it to go. I can show you how this build process is going though. So when the, the build is occurring, let me make this a little bit larger. I sort of see how this happens. It, we retrieve that top level triple I collection that's here on line nine. Uh, and then a small thing happens on the back end that we where we get the list of all the items in that triple I collection. Uh, and we retrieve them into small chunks. So we don't want to overload the providing institution servers. So we receive them in chunks of 10. Um, and we go out and get get them. Uh, we sort of see a status code here, so we know that we've retrieved each of these manifests properly. Um, and then once all those manifests are are gathered, we have 29 of 29 gathered successfully, this is when the, the metadata aggregation occurs. And we're walking through each of those metadata labels that we, we, we uh, stated earlier, so walking through date, 
we're, and, and we're generating new collections for each unique combination of that label and value for the uh, for for each metadata um, I guess pair. Uh, so you sort of see here date 1880, date 1892, date 1881. And same thing with classification here, classification drawings, classification paintings. Um, and then that's, that is all used for the search index. Um, and if I come back over, this should be done by now. Uh, if I come over here, I don't know, please don't tell me. This is the problem with live demos. I may have missed a step. I don't think I did the, There it is. Come, I wasn't I wasn't patient enough. Uh, and here's the website. Uh, and so these are the two up uh, at, the, at the very top here. Uh, there's a featured um, uh, manifest. So the, these are the two that I decided to feature. Uh, and I'm gonna make this a little, a little bit larger. Um, uh, so these are the two that are featured, uh, and these will link to the pages that represent those two manifests. It's just a little like about area. And then these are uh, the two different metadata labels that we've set here. So date and classification. And we automatically sort of, we figured out which one of these was like the most populous and we made them available on the home page. Uh, and then if I come over to works here, I will see my 29 results here. And so these are the same 29 again that were in that triple life collection from Harvard. And then each one of these will have a page um, that will have an automatically generated URL that's based off of my GitHub pages. Uh, uh, and then within that, they'll be automatically linking to any predefined uh, metadata facets that we've set. So, so because we set date and classification, uh, we now are able to link back to the search result. Oh, what happened there? Oh, this is uh, just a bad URL thing. Uh, um, the, the this is automatically linked back here, and now we we can sort of see these th three results that match for 1892 end date. Um, going to this about page, uh, we can further add in markdown content here. So uh, this is this is for this is sort of example markdown content, but let's just imagine we we were a, a scholar of some sort uh, related uh, and we uh, uh, let me see here I use that um, There it is. So I sort of pre-wrote this. Let's just imagine where we are a scholar um, and we know a lot about Winslow Homer. Um, I'm going to bring in some markdown and put that in replacement of this example content. Um, and so if I come over to my Homer page here, my Homer uh, site here, and I click on content. I go into this content directory. This is where all my markdown is. And I'm going to replace this previous markdown with my, my Homer related markdown. Um, you can sort of see it's just, it, it you know, it's pretty basic content here. But right here, I'm defining on line 14 a viewer. And I'm saying, I want my IIIF viewer to be this manifest. And then even further down on line 24, I'm going to set, hey, I want my uh, IIIF viewer to uh, be this URL. And this is gonna have to be a little bit more specific, um, but I'm gonna want it to be slash Homer. Um, and this is gonna be the relative URL to a a date uh, collection for 1880. Uh, and then I'm gonna do the same right here as well. And this is a, a relative URL. 
sort of a no-no. Um, we could set the absolute URL, but I'm gonna just do a relative for now. And well, actually here, let's just be safe. Um, and I'm going to commit this. It will take a, a minute for it to build, but um, because I, I committed that change, it's gonna trigger a rebuild of my collection it's going to it's going to go out and it's going to rebuild the entire collection again. Um, and and the reason why I I'm bringing that up is because the uh, it's sort of by design. And also, I could understand why if you had a very large collection, you wouldn't want it to do this each time. But it is going to gather those manifests again each time. Um, and and do our new rebuild. Uh, but the reason why that is is let's just say this triple IF collection was changing over time. We want to we want to trigger that build uh, as often as possible. Um, and coming to here, this markdown page is going to look like that. Um, while this is doing that, on I'm, I'm going to just put that on hold. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to. Um, look at my collection as it exists in, in the Harvard uh, site. And I can't remember which one of these it was. Um, uh, I had a I think there was one call item that I wanted to add in, but I don't remember what it was. Sorry. Uh, oh, this one. Uh, the brush. So this is this item here uh, is not part of my my Harvard Triple Life collection. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that in. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to show you how easy it is now that because previously I had 29, but now I have 30. What I can do now is go back over to my, my GitHub pages site here and, and, and come to my deploy to GitHub pages workflow. And I can manually, manually run this workflow so that I could add in that 30th item. And that is now running and we'll show that again in a second um so that that's this item right here um did something sort of out of sync but this is that that markdown content that i had just previously authored in in github and i i i committed and so you can sort of see that there's we're, we should see three triple if viewers here now uh, we have our, our, our heading here. We have our paragraph content. We had a triple I viewer for this one manifest. Uh, here we have a triple I F viewer that is hitting a triple I F collection. That's locally hosted here, um, uh, for the date 1880. Um, that should match the same dates that if you were to go over into the works page and search for 1880, it should be those same four. Uh, and then at the bottom here, we're going to have date for 1897. So you can sort of see how I can sort of like write markdown content in as I would as some sort of scholar or for a digital exhibit, but then interweave those triple IF manifests fairly easily and also hit those facets as I am doing so. Um, and finally, let's see if this number will turn to 30 and then I'll be done. Um, and up for questions too, as well. Uh, actually, uh, Chelsea has a question in the chat, <clears throat> which I'll just read. Um, unless you want to unmute Chelsea, but I'll go ahead and read it. Um, 
they said they maybe missed this, but um, curious about including items from multiple institutions in a single canopy collection or exhibit. Um, yes. What do you think? So um, absolutely. I mean, this is what IIIF is designed to do. So a IIIF collection it has there, there's it's just a your is just a URL and the manifests within it are just URLs. There's no reason why you can't do it. And I'm actually, I'm working on a project right now that is doing this very thing where um, at Northwestern, we are serving out uh, a set of Arabic manuscripts and University of Illinois uh, uh, is also doing the same. And we're trying to combine the set of Arabic manuscripts under one digital collection. Um, and the there are, uh, there are uh, complications in that. Um, it, it, it's absolutely a, you're absolutely able to do it, but what you what the the concerns uh, gather around uh, consistency and metadata med, metadata labeling, um, because here on my on my search page, I'm setting date right and classification. Well, let's just say my institution does date but the other institution does date created, then that makes it a little bit harder to facet from because of the inconsistencies there. Uh, but whether or not you can create those triple of collections and sort of, I guess, normalize those labels, uh, uh, it's sort of a, I, I guess a technical hurdle that you'll need to overcome, um, but it isn't something that's insurmountable. Uh, I don't know if that helps answer your question. But Canopy itself should have no problem doing the build. It's whether or not it looks clean on the presentation side. And I would just add to that, that I guess, you know, as a kind of digital scholar who tries my best to create my own manifests on occasion, if that content is um, open public domain, then you could essentially create your own manifest, right, Matt, like point to the images inside that manifest, but add your own metadata, kind of curate that, yeah. those labels if you wanted to, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and in those cases, it might be a need to like normalize through some sort of middle, middling, middleware service or somewhere. I, and we have actually, I've considered ways to do that in Canopy to like sort of like merge the two. Um, that gets into like a realm of like, should this be on the presentation side of things or should this be handled uh, somewhere sort of in the middle, um, you know? And just watching the chat, um, Mark put a link for Detective I never know how to pronounce it, detect triple IF, the browser extension, which builds collections. Um, I've used that for Canopy actually, thanks to your uh, really great workshop at the last triple IF conference online. And um, it generates a collection that you can then use for deploying a Canopy site. Um, so thanks for sharing that, Mark. That's a great resource for this. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have one question. That's uh, Matt. Are you going to the IIIF conference this year? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay, uh, it's just because my colleague Neil is running one of the Birds of Feather sections, uh, specifically talking about IIIF collections and you know what do we do with them, what could we do with them. So it'd be great if you were around to attend that because I'm sure you'd extremely valuable input. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I will be there. Great. Great. Will you be there? Yes, I will be as well. Yeah. Right. And Chelsea put another comment and or question. Sorry, and I'm going to read this one again because I had the same question actually, or a version of it. But is the intended use case for Canopy primarily institutions, or do you imagine uh, it used by individual researchers or even in a classroom? I don't think there is any limitation. The limitation, honestly, is probably on the higher end, uh, meaning like, you know, I I don't foresee like institutions like the Getty using, you know, for like a, for their actual like site, you know, but like even, even, a, even a, a regional 
art museum. Um, I, I do see it more for like for classrooms, for for researchers in, in you know doing graduate level work, um, and also for for smaller libraries or museums. Um, there is some limit, um, and I, I've I've tested this. For instance, we have a, a digital collection. It's the Berkeley Folk Music Collection, which has thirty three thousand items. Which, in the grand scheme of things, in the internet, it's not a lot, but for a digital collection, it's fairly large. And um, and I will say that canopy falls down around item twenty thousand. So, uh, and it, there's, there's there's some some level where it, it doesn't it doesn't seem to to work because of the generation it needs to happen every on every belt. Um, yeah, uh, and. I think it's also dependent on the providing institutions like uh I guess infrastructure level as well. You know, are they able to handle uh you know sort of continuous requests for a, a, a small period of time? Um because I mean this is there's a generation that happened here for these 27 items where each of these manifests was hit 27 times. But then also this image server was hit many, many times as well. So you have to sort of think about that. Um, and you know, this is this is the internet. Uh, uh, and try to do things responsible responsibly. But I think there's some some level of limitation there. But to answer your question, I could totally see it being used for classrooms. Um I know a similar product collection builder. Is somewhat used like that, um, and Canopy can be used in a similar way because it can be hosted in GitHub Pages. You know, I'm kind of struck by how this um, mirrors the museum exhibition catalog in a way. You know, you could reference <clears throat> collections from the loan lending institutions and kind of. Um, build a catalog that way, and I can see it potentially replacing kind of microsites in a museum context um, that are temporary in nature. Or, um, but I, I guess I wonder for the long term, as a static site, um, speaking out of ignorance, like is it more sustainable in a way than a kind of building an exhibition or other kind of web page for a temporary kind of time based event or easier to archive in a way? Yeah, I think this that the whole the archiving of a static site that's triple IF based gets a little complicated. Um because all of these images, they're not hosted here, right? Um and and I think I think that is the question about whether or not uh this can be easily archived. I mean, obviously I think it could be, but I think there would need to be some sort of uh process that would happen to create a small derivative if something were to be like permanently archived. Um, I'm not sure if that was where you were going with that. Man, but... I think that's where my question ended up. So yeah, that's um, a great uh, question, I think, overall for a lot of um, projects. Uh, anyone, if you have a question, please speak up or however you like to pose it. I, I did have one more question about, you know, if you wanted to share a detail or can you um, set a viewer to a region and kind of zoom into a detail and one if you're adding kind of scholarly content through Markdown, is that one of the features you can set through Markdown? Um. So the viewer component itself supports to some level uh, the content state API. Uh, however, I think what you're are you, what you're getting at is like if you were on in a this page, for example, and you wanted to zoom in on this horse in the same way this occurs, right? Like, right. Um, I'm not sure is, is that the best example yes uh but yeah uh you know i think those components could come about uh 
as we need to, but like the, there is a packaged in canopy is clover. This is, this is something where maybe I just need to document it better. And the clover has an image component, which allows you to uh, set the source. So if you had the source set as a specific image, I, I, actually, I really like that question. I, I think it is possible. I just need to document. <laughs> um, uh, I just think it's a pretty common museum use case, I think, where for any uh, number of reasons, you know, you want to detail, it could even be technical imaging, scientific Im imaging. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a really good question. And I don't want to waste everyone's time doing the, the live demo of it and stumbling through it. But I think we could totally say, I, you know, you could draw your region and if you know your region coordinates, set that in the image source and then and then it could be just automatically set using that clever image component. But I, I, I might I might do that after this. I love this uh, example, by the way, of Homer's horses. Like I think keep going on this. It's a good theme. <laughs> yeah. Did anyone else have a question for Mark or Matt or Mark? Yeah, Mark is here, by the way. Um, Mark is my colleague at the University, of, or was my colleague at the University of Tennessee and sort of helped me develop this throughout. So. Was, was there a point there, Mark, you made about commenting? And yeah, I was, maybe Matt skipped this on purpose, actually, but I think it's kind of cool. And it's it's like, I guess, to some extent, kind of bes like not bespoke, but like limited in all of its use cases. But um, as Matt pointed out, that uh, um, uh, canopy pulls from Clover and Clover has a, a thing called scroll now, another component. Um, which takes advantages of annotations, which historically, I guess the last time we talked about that really wasn't quite done yet. Doesn't, I don't think it works currently for tagging annotations. Is that right, Matt? It's just really commenting or is it both? Um, so this is the scroll component, um, but the it works for all, really all textual annotations. It doesn't really limit itself to, to a specific uh, motivation. Um, but this is a, a manuscript that's written in this, you know, cursive from the 1860s, right? So it's not very legible, um, at least to my eyes. Um, but alongside of this, each of these canvases are these, uh, textual body annotations, uh, and they're now searchable. Um, so if I search for the word Lincoln here. I could sort of see where those those items pop up. And so this component is part of Clover. Clover is part of Canopy. This component can be used in Canopy uh, uh, in the same ways that those, those, those viewer components are being inset into that, that Homer uh, markdown content. Um, uh, and I, the only reason I didn't uh, mention that is uh, it, it, it's a, it was getting a little in the weeds, but, but essentially, the all Clover components are becoming part of Canopy and can now be, and then can be used within Markdown, um, if that makes sense. Um, so anything that's gonna be over here will be part of Canopy uh, and, um, and thus be able to be used for extending uh, contextual information about your uh, IIIF resources. Yeah, I think in some ways, like, you know, it's not as maybe as works exactly like everything else, but it could be like some way to like easily bring in like some storyboarding kind of stuff here. If you have some like annotated uh, work with annotations across like um, images or whatever, you can you can maybe like do some stuff where you're, I don't know, talking about, I don't know if it, if it works for, for regions, though, is it maybe that's the problem is that it's not doesn't really work for that yet. Well, for I think for do you mean like highlighting a region or do you mean no? I mean I guess like if, if you have an annotation that sits on a and it's like targeting like a, a specific part of a canvas 
like what shows up on the left and scroll. Maybe we're getting too in the weeds here, but I guess what I was trying to think is if like, you know, if you had like a series of annotations that were like, like tagging different parts and then like, you know, like essentially as you scroll, like what's on the left hand side, like updates to kind of be that, that annotated part of the canvas. Was that wrong? Um, I, I'm not totally following. Do you mean this right here? First that? I guess what sorry, I, my understanding of the, what's on the right is like is like essentially like just whatever the the textual part of the annotation is. But I, I guess I'm, I'm I'm more talking about like what what the annotation itself is targeting, and so what would appear on the left. So like you know if if you had like if you I don't know if you had like textual content about um a specific like art piece like that would show up on the right, and then the left would be whatever was the annotation was targeting. Is that wrong? On the right is the textual body for the canvas. Mm -hmm. on the, What's on the left? On the left, this is the canvas itself. But then when you're searching, you can sort of search within each of the... What, what if it was a specific part of the canvas? Does it show the full canvas or does it show that specific part? Kind of getting back to what Matthew was like even asking about with like when you were talking about image, where it was like, I like a... to show the region. Um this does not work to that granularity yet. That doesn't mean that these would still render. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily see the overlay in the open suit dragon viewer. Um, but you would still see them rendered out in an order. If that, I don't know if that makes sense. Would it zoom in on the region though of the of the of the annotation or no? The annotations are new to Clover, so they, the, the 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 truth is is that that would need to be over here, um, in an annotations tab. The scroll component doesn't really itemize region based annotations yet. Uh, okay, I apologize for for getting us off track there. Anyway, it's a. I think it's a, a potential thing in the. You know, when you're thinking about like next steps, I think Matt, you even maybe brought this up, like bringing Storyboard IO or something into this at some point. Um, I think you you suggested that maybe back in December, um, and I think that's a really good idea, and, and it's the kind of thing that I think we want to do because we I think that's the like the really valuable part for someone who's creating content. Yeah, I. Um, totally see where you're going with that because um, in, even in a classroom context, I think there's a lot of storytelling with AAAF going on and having the ability to do it both through Canopy to kind of build the collections and focus on the collections and do it all together would be really interesting. Yeah, so thank you for talking through that. I totally see where you're getting at. And if anyone else has questions, I think we have about five minutes until the end of the hour. And thank you, Matt, for the demo so far and presentation. Absolutely, thank you for inviting me. Um, you know, it's, I guess I'll just close by like, it's still in development, but it continues to get closer. Um, we just released theming um, this past weekend. Um, now theming is, fairly basic, but it allows you to customize colors. Um, and then on top of that, you could customize fonts and you can get closer to matching a brand, I think. Okay, well, if um, we don't have any other questions, um, exciting to hear that you'll be at the conference in Los Angeles and um, Tristan will be there. So that's great to know. <laughs> Um, I guess we can leave it there and I'll just give a quick plug for our next call uh, next month in May on May 20th, the project directors for Sunset Over Sunset will be presenting their project, which is a collaborative digital humanities project incorporating five years of Ed Ruscha's Sunset Boulevard photographs and um, five years doesn't really cover it. It's this huge archive, um, thousands and thousands of photos of Sunset Boulevard. Um, so we'll have all three of the, uh, the PIs talking about that. 
And um, the museum context there is that it uses Getty Museum uh, IIIF manifests. Um, and I think raises a lot of questions like Canopy does in a way on the kind of how you build and enrich IIIF resources going forward. Because museums, archives, libraries put a lot of effort into generating manifests and seeing this larger life and reuse of them, um, as Matt talked a lot about for Canopy, I think is, is really vital. So um, thanks everyone for joining today and thank you, Caitlin, for recording it. Of course, see you next week, next month rather. Next month, <laughs> yeah. Thanks everyone, goodbye. Thank you all.